good morning it's so lovely being back on the run wench i mean i absolutely adored my camper van adventure two months traveling around but there's no place like home is there <laughs> anyway today's going to be sort of a chores type day i need to go and cruise to turn round and then head back that way because i need to go to the services at anderton and fill up the water tanks and empty rubbish all that sort of stuff but before we do that, I'm going to go and check the weed hatch because when I mowed up here the other day, I was really struggling. I think I might have something around my prop, but it's worth checking anyway. So we'll go and do that first. Come on. So to access my propeller, I first need to lift up this rather stiff flap and then there's a bar that goes across my actual weed hatch. Now you've got to make sure that this is always tight because a lot of boat sinkings happen when the weed hatch isn't tight enough. Yeah, and then once that's lifted out, I then get access to this nice, damp, dirty hole. Which then I can put my arm down. Yeah, it's bloody lovely. Lovely job. And then once you've cleared the weed hatch, there actually wasn't anything down mine. You need to make sure that it's all put back properly again. So I give it a good hammer back into place, make sure it's nice and tight, and then it's ready to go. now to the winding hole which is just up here and then to turn around and come back oh the joys of boating bit of a faff but we've made it it's bloody freezing today <laughs> So today's journey is about four and a half miles, which will take me about an hour and 45 minutes. But I also want to stop at the services and fill up with water. Now for me with an empty tank, sometimes this can take up to two hours depending on water pressure and how empty I am because I've got a big one. Yeah, a water tank. But that'll mean by the time I've finished, most of the day's gone and it'll be rum time. Woohoo! So it's a very gloomy, dull, overcast sky today and it's bloody freezing and we're in March. I was hoping when I come back from a European adventure that it'd be nice and sunny and spring would be here. But alas, it isn't. Soon will be though, hopefully. And I'm looking forward to getting to Anderton because for me, that's like home because my mum and dad are only a mile up the road. Yeah, which is lovely because I spend so much of my life being away from them, either traveling around on the boat and being miles away or with my little camper van. So these are the services now here at Anderton and there's a fiberglass boat moored there and I don't know if other boaters are like this but whenever I see a fiberglass boat I'm always frightened to death especially when trying to moor up because my big heavy steel boat and plastic don't mix very well. So I'm just at the water point here now and it's probably going to take a while because I've emptied all the water out of my water tank as I was cruising, I'd left the tap on and now that's going to fill up right from the beginning. Normally when you live aboard, you're using your water all the time, you're filling up every week or so, so it's, it's all fine, it's like nice fresh water but because I've left the boat for two months, that means that water's going to be a bit stagnant, a bit crappy, so I thought I'd drain it all out and put nice fresh water in. 
Yeah, so we're going to be here a while, so I'm going to go in now and make myself a brew whilst we're waiting, because it's pretty freezing. And we're off, and I'll tell you what, when I was looking at the boat there then, at the water point, she looked so dirty and scruffy. She's got loads of paint chips. I need to, this year, give her some TLC. I'm gonna paint my handrails. I'm gonna touch up the gunnels. I'm gonna make her look good again. Yeah, it's a bit of DIY this year, I think. Gotta look after these boats, you see. You gotta look after them, because it's my home, it's my transport, it's everything. Give me your strength and show me your weakness We're in this together now We're in this together now Give me your love and tell me your secrets Cause we're in this together now Yeah, we're in this together now so I'm all moored up here now at Anderton and my friends Helen and Russell off Professor Pat Pending, the electric boat, they're just moored just round the corner. So a little bit later, I'm going to go round there and have a chat with them because I did a video of them quite a while ago. I'll put a link in the description, but it'd be good to have an update from them because they're running a full electric boat, the continuous cruises, and this is their second winter on the cut. So it'd be good to just see how they get on with it all, won't it? Yeah, very different compared to a a noisy old diesel like mine. What you got? Are you going to give me that? Can I have it? No. Let me have it, Bonnie. Leave. Leave. No, we're still working on that one. So I'm going to go around now and just catch up with Helen and Russell. And remember, their boat is not only electric propulsion powered by electric, but also they don't have any gas on board. So they're relying on electric to heat the hot water, do all the cooking, all that malarkey. So let's go around now and just see how they've been coping for the last two years as continuous cruisers just being powered completely by electric. So I'm here now on Professor Pat Pending to find out how they're getting on with a fully electric boat in winter and also over the last two years as continuous cruisers. So one of the big questions that I want to know and probably most of the people that watch is having an electric boat that's, you've got a diesel jenny haven't you, but you're yeah. mostly, but you're electric powered. So you cruise by electric motor, all your stuff on the boat, your cooker and your bread maker and all that's electric. So how often now do you have to put your Jenny on and also how much are you spending a month on diesel? So for the last year we've used about 330 litres of diesel, which is two litres a day, running it for an hour a day during the colder period. Yeah, so the main time we use the generator is November to February. And then once the sun starts getting better as it has done recently, we use the generator less and less, and then during the summer, we hardly use it at all. This year, we've traveled 650 miles and 550 locks. Last week, when it was really sunny, we got what we needed for the day off the solar. Fantastic, fantastic. So this boat is an Otto Marine fully electric boat. So for a whole year now, running your Jenny to power all your appliances, heat your hot water, and also your cruising. So you're saying you did 600 miles. Yes. Right. How much have you spent on diesel? So a year for us is March to March, because that's when we started continuously cruising. We've used 330 litres of fuel, which was anything from a pound and five to one pound 40 a litre, depending on where we 
where we got it from and what the price was at the time. Because Ellen there, she's working out here on Calculate. Look at this. Yeah. Just short of £400. Wow. So remember, guys, that this boat is fully electric. So putting that generator on for one hour in the winter, because mostly in the summer they don't need to because of the solar panels, but that also not only charges their big bank of batteries, but it powers an electric fan oven, an induction hob, a bread maker, a slow cooker, a blender and toaster, electric kettle. Oh, my God, that is a luxury. Also, a washing machine, a microwave. Their hot water is powered by an immersion heater. They've got electric radiator, two fan heaters, a smart TV soundbar, handheld Dyson, and a fridge and a freezer. Wow. So, just under £400, which is roughly what I've sort of spent for my big thumper of an engine, but I'm also buying petrol for my Jenny and also gas. You know, so they're doing this all just off the electric with the backup Jenny. So it does seem to be a lot more cost effective. It's better for the environment and also it's a lot quieter. This year has been better for us because the first year we had to learn how everything worked. So we used the generator a bit more than what we really needed to. This year we've used it 30 odd hours less in a year. So that's brought our fuel consumption down. And now with the bigger prop, that's helped save power. So going forwards, we, we should be in a better position for next winter. So anyway, with all this money you've saved, having all this electric, <laughs> you can treat me in the pub in a minute now. Let's go Stanley Arms. <laughs> So me and little Bonnie have just come back from a little break away with all of my family, my nieces and nephews, my mum and dad. It was fantastic. She was off a lead quite a bit, which was really good because obviously, because she's quite reactive, I can't normally let her off. But because there was so much space and the weather was horrendous, there weren't many people about. So she was great being off a lead, which was fantastic. But it was really nice catching up with everyone because I've not seen them for ages. Anyway, over the next few days, I'm going to be getting the run wench ready to go down onto the River Weaver. I just hope the weather gets better. <laughs> I'm talking about miserable weather. Just to cheer myself up, I'm going to be meeting in a minute a boating friend of mine in the pub and I'll, I'll take you with me. We're going to the pub again. That's twice in one week. So we've just had an amazing meal here in the Stanley Arms. Again, another good one. I had the cooked breakfast and you had, what do you have? I had steak and onion sandwich. Yes. On gluten-free bread as well. Yeah, she's one of them odd ones, you know, them sort of gluten-free, vegan-y types. Yeah, you're not, no, but you're not a vegan though for I'm having steak. Vegan, no. You like your meat? I just like your meat. But Charlie, they've got a wide beam. So what the other week when I showed you Winch and Wharf, where I left my narrowboat at Narrowboats Limited, She's been and bought, well, you've had it a while now, haven't you? It's yeah. a, a sail away wide beam boat from Collingwood. And you got it from Liam, didn't you? We did get it off Liam, yeah. yeah. And uh, they're just spitting it out now, which when, when it's done, I'll take you around, we'll go and have a look. But at the moment, yeah. it's just a shell. It's been insulated. They started putting all the, the sides on. Floor and under the gunnels and yeah. a couple of um, bulkheads in. And yeah, we're working on it. They're eventually going to live on it. Yeah. yeah, so that'd be nice, but it's a nice big one, and, and you like a wide one, don't you? I certainly do. Yeah, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is Charlie, everyone. I'm going to be going in a minute. I've got to go back now and make some badges. <laughs> yeah, but I just thought I'd show you about it, because we like to meet these other boaters, don't we? And especially ones that have bought boats and doing them up. 
So the lovely Charlie also came bearing some gifts. She got me a bottle of gin from a local town of Warrington, a nice candle, which smelt beautiful, a little throw for Bonnie, she thought it was a toy, and then even more. You can't do that with it. <laughs> hey, there's more alcohol here. Are you trying to get me a drum? So this is a... Uh, I know. <coughs> Very posh spiced rum. Now look at the label on that. How cool is that? I think it's Welsh. Welsh rum. I can't see any pictures of sheep on there. Yeah, but look at that. Welsh rum. Looking forward to trying that one. I like me weird different rums. And then... I <laughs> know. Oh, and this is little pug. We have a look at this. Because if you remember, we used to have little pudding. Yeah. yeah it looks like pudding. Does that look like pudding? Hey. So you can fight over that. Yeah, that's <laughs> lovely. Hey. Oh, who's that? Oh, who's that? oh look at him. Thank you so much. It's very, very kind. I'm going to put this in my boatsman's cabin. It's so got an absolutely lovely afternoon spent with Charlie. Yeah, she bought me lunch. Got all these presents, it's like Christmas. Yeah, I just feel quite overwhelmed. It's so lovely, it's so kind. So we've just got back now and we're gonna give this a try. This is that Damson Gin Liqueur, 25%. And this is from Warrington. Now, I grew up round here and I used to go clubbing in Warrington. I when I was a teenager, about three years ago. And just whilst I am pouring this, a big shout out to this week's pirate crew. Thank you for everything you do. It really helps. I love that. That's cute, isn't it? Like a little, little, little nipple. Woo! So this week's been a little bit different because I've been catching up with my family, but also with some fellow boaters. Helen and Russell off that electric boat, they are such wonderful, wonderful people and their boat is outstanding. It really is, you know, that it's very cost effective to run compared to my big old diesel and the amount I use on gas. I've got an instant hot water Morco thing and I use a gas bottle every five to six weeks, but I have got hot water all the time on tap, which is nice. Yes, that was great. And also with Charlie. How kind was she with all those gifts? I was overwhelmed. Anyway, we're going to try this now. This is the gift from her. So, yeah, so let's give it a go. I like a gin. Well, I like anything, really. I drink anything. Let's give it a go. Mm. Oh, that's, that's very tasty. And it, it ta you don't need a mixer. It's very smooth. Oh warming me up actually now it's nice it as gives you that afterburn mm. Mm. oh yeah it's lovely that <laughs> it is it's really nice very sweet anyway so i'm going to leave the video there if you have enjoyed it please do give it a thumbs up subscribe down below if you haven't already and next week we're going to be getting this boat ready and hopefully taking it down onto the river we're just waiting for those levels to drop a little bit and hopefully the weather will pick up but yeah so that's it guys so please stay kept <laughs> take care stay safe and a massive thank you to my lovely patrons bye